We met Ehud Barak at his office in Tel Aviv, and I began by asking the former Prime Minister, Army General, and now voice of opposition here, for his reaction to last Saturday's attack. It was shocking for everyone in the country. It's a barbarian, mur murderous uh, act. Um, reminds you of uh, Al-Qaeda or Daesh-like operations. Unheard of. It was the most severe blow uh, Israel suffered since the day of its establishment. So it was a significant failure of intelligence, a significant failure of security. Do you think that the prime minister can survive this in the long run? I think he shouldn't. I think in a normal place he would have uh, resigned just by looking at the kind of thing that happened under his responsibility, even if he were not involved in any way. That's put a huge responsibility on him personally. Do you think he is the right man to lead Israel into this war? Look, I, I don't want to focus on Netanyahu himself. So what should be the scale of the response now and what should be the purpose of it? What should be the aim? The purpose is, I think, well-defined, sometimes in some hyperbole uh, words in English, but well-defined. It is to make sure that any military capability of Hamas will be paralyzed and uh, erased. No military, uh, not a single uh, ped, uh, launcher uh, for rockets, not a single uh, magazine dump or whatever, lab or, or, or training site. And that's the purpose. It was, we were lucky if it could have been completed from the air. It cannot be accomplished for well, so you have to come on the ground. So highly probably there will be a wide-scale operation on the ground. Anthony Blinken said this, how Israel does this matters. Democracies, he said, talking about uh, civilian casualties and avoiding them, democracies need to strive for a different standard even when it is difficult. Do you agree with that? So I don't need Blinken to tell us. That's our uh, kind of uh, book for day one. Israel uh, is not uh, going to deteriorate into the behavior of uh, Hamas. We are committed to international law. We want the population we said. We are going to hit every asset of uh, Hamas. So any one of you, citizens of Gaza, who knows that in his residential place or in the working place, there is any uh, installation of Hamas, asset of Hamas, now or in the last, let's say, year or two, be careful. This is a target. Leave the area. Don't stay there. We are serious. Would you have imposed the blockade on food and fuel and medicines because was we, that necessary? We are, we are doing it necessary now. But I can promise you, without having any discussion on it, or anyone in power now, Israel will not let people die in the hospital of Gaza because uh, we blocked a, a medical uh, kind of a drugs or, or whatever hospital needs. Uh, no baby will die because there is no milk because of Israel. Just explain why. You said it's necessary. Why do you think it's necessary? Because, because there, a way should be found to clarify to Hamas that the choice, and, and even to the overall public in Gaza, that it's a different, it, it, we started a different chapter. Nothing is going to be as it were. Should the priority be to get the hostages out, or is defeating Hamas, the only thing that matters? There are constraints. Hostages is one constraint. Whom to pass it afterwards, one constraint. The uh, risk of spreading into much wider regional is a constraint, and the same applies to following uh, uh, genuinely the international law. So we are facing all these constraints. If can, I will... can you get the hostages out in the same operation uh, that is being planned, the same military I operation. think, you, you know, because even the Hamas leaders are watching Sky News, I would not uh, discuss the details of this uh, constraint. It's a subtle issue. I can promise you that our uh, cabinet, the, the war cabinet, is taking this into account and mm. try to do its oh, best. This is, uh, oh, this At is, that uh, point, the sirens sounded. 
take it for me, it won't land here, the missile. Okay. Okay. Finally, you tried to negotiate a peace deal um, back in 2000 with Arafat, Bill Clinton. Um, was that the missed chance? Was that the missed opportunity? You cannot judge whether it's a missed chance. You know, people tell me, you were so close, so close with Arafat. How come you didn't uh, come to an agreement? I say, when you want to measure the size of a gap, you have to m multiply the width by the depth. So probably it was very close, but very deep. Uh, uh, myself and Clinton put on the table a far-reaching proposal that covered metaphorically more than 90% of whatever Arafat can dream of. The fact that he rejected it and turned deliberately to terror, that would make both myself and, uh, and uh, till these days, Clinton, still when he's asked, he says, Arafat is responsible because we were very serious and he rejected it. So are we now as far away from a genuine peace as it's possible to be? We are further than uh, 25 years ago. At that time, you have, we have a huge tailwind from the whole world uh, toward uh, reaching the settlement. Now we have the opposite. We have a, a Daesh-like uh, organization on our border. But I never lose uh, eye contact with the objective. The object, objective should be disengagement with the Palestinians and solving it with a, uh, a, a border inside the Holy Land, where we have 80% of our settlers and all the strategic interests of Israel to live side by side with the Palestinian state, which is demilitarized, but, uh, but uh, uh, kind of viable. That's the vision, because we need it. Ehud Barak, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.